Y'all, I'm so sorry. I don't, I, I have no idea what happened. I hope y'all come back. I wasn't going to be much longer, but I had a mistake. I'm so sorry. Come on back in. Yay. Thank you, Suset. I'm so sorry. So I just found this out and I don't know why it's happening, but, um, and I don't think I've ever had this happen before. Hopefully everybody will come back. I'm so sorry. They're slowly coming back in, y'all. Um, okay, here we go. Um, gosh, that's never happened. But I I um put my phone. Come on back in the room. Come on back, y'all. Hey, Melanie, thank you for coming back. So sorry about that. I put my phone down on my laptop. And it's almost like, I don't know what it is, but it's almost like the, the laptop cannot handle it and it surges. What What's happening? What's happening with my laptop when it does? I don't, literally, I placed, I just didn't even think about it, but I put my phone down on my laptop and it like, it, it's almost like it sucks the energy out of the laptop. It, it's so weird. And so then I lose everything, like everything just, so I hope I didn't lose that whole video, but. Um, um, yeah, so I'm hoping everybody comes back. Oh no, but, and I don't even remember what I was talking about. I'm so discombobulated right now. I have no idea, but, um, so I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stay on here like two more minutes and see if we can get people to come back in. Um, but, um, okay, here comes somebody else. Hey, welcome back. So sorry that that happened. Come on and comment. Let me know who you are. Steve Rogers. Hey, how you doing? Um, he wants to know how many watermelon seeds I usually plant per container. Two. Just because I want to make sure one uh, sprouts. And once one sprouts, I remove the other. So I usually, personally for me, um, in a five-gallon container, I would only use one watermelon plant in each container. Now, if y'all do it different to set or Melanie or hopefully uh DD comes back in and let's see who else was in here. Um Food Force told us bye, but there were some other people. Oh my goodness, please come back guys. Ah! I've never had this happen before. Uh but I would only I personally have only been putting one plant in a container, in a five gallon bucket or, or whatever, because, uh, watermelons are heavy feeders and I just didn't want them competing for, for nutrients. Now, if you have like a 17 gallon container or something like that, you could probably do uh, three or four plants. Uh, but, um, yeah. Hey, Gail. <laughs> Welcome back. I had a surge. My, my, um, video, I set my cell phone down on my laptop and it said, Zoop. It's like the phone sucked all the life out of the laptop and it went completely, it glitched and then turned completely off. So I was talking about um, uh, composting in place, composting, why we do it, what's the hype about it, is it worth it, you know, why do, why is composting good for the soil, what are the disadvantages of composting, all this other stuff for beginners because we have a lot of people that um, specifically watch my channel because of beginner gardeners. I'm a beginner gardener as well. I'm learning, but we, that's, that's the topic for right now. I harvested some okra seeds. So I was like, Oh, what should I do with these dried seed pods? Well, you should probably compost them. You shouldn't throw them in the trash. Um, so just giving ideas about how to compost, um, Steve Rogers says, so how many should I add in a 20 gallon? I'd say you could add about four, four or five. Yeah, one per five gallon. That would, I mean, if I'm just telling you what I would, I would do. I'm not saying that's a fact or anything, uh, but I would add four, four or five uh, plants in a 20 gallon container. Um, if if it's 20 gallons, not not wide, but 20 gallons deep, I would add that. Yeah, I wouldn't add it if it's 20 gallons wide. Well, no, you could probably. I would say four. I would say four if it's 20 gallons wide. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Because sometimes you have those fabric. Come on in here, little big girl. Okay. She said, in a minute. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, 
but uh, I've never grown watermelon out of um, fabric containers before. I've only grown them out of five gallon buckets and uh, uh, what's it called? Crates. But I've only had one plant in each one. Um, so I hope that gives you an idea, Steve. Uh, I'm not um, an expert. If anybody else has any um, advice about how many plants to grow, how many watermelon plants to grow in a 20 gallon container, that's his question. Uh, please, please share. Um, success that I would do four. See how com how they see who come up, then separate some if you want. See how many come up and then separate. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would do too. Good. So, um, what else about? Com oh, I was sharing somebody's YouTube page channel. I'm trying to forget to not lay my phone down on the laptop, but um. Uh, Robbie, I think y'all saw that Robbie and Gary's gardening. Uh, I would look at her channel about how to compost in place using containers. She also compost in place. She'd just be like walking around in the garden and she says, huh, she'll stop, dig a hole right in the ground, bury some stuff, cover it up and keep it moving. I mean, she'll literally do that on camera sometimes. So, so yeah, um, Let's see. Thank you all for coming back. We have about four. I think we had 10 in that last live stream. So four of the 10 came back. I'm so sorry, guys. Didn't mean for that to happen. Um, what else do we want to know about composting? Any other questions that you all want to know about composting? Anybody? Um... Let's see. So little big girl farmer just got up from a nap and she discovered that three of her Mama, pumpkin. Look, you did this. You ate three at a time. What did I eat? My pumpkin, one of my pumpkin muffins. I ate your pumpkin muffin? Yeah. Three at a time. <laughs> oh, what is that? Um, they're seeds. They're okra seeds. Um, mommy's mommy's live right now. Do you want to say hi to everyone and then go put these back? No. I'm... Or give them to your dad. Can I touch them? Yeah, you can touch them. Okay, guys, sorry. She just woke up from a nap. Do you want to say hello? Yes. Hey, <laughs> uh, mommy. The hi, everyone. Mommy. Yes. Um, I went to bed. Oh my goodness, Will. It doesn't seem like you did. Yes, I did. Oh, you did. Well, sometimes we have accidents. But yeah, but it is so cool. Okay. Well, go tell Dad and and take these to him too. Okay. So I can share with him. Mhm. Mm I hope he likes. Okay. Close the door. Okay. Sorry, guys. Um, welcome back, Four Horns. Thank you for coming back. Yeah, I had a little glitch. Um, John Collier. No, I've never heard of him either, uh, Four Horns. So there's another resource, resource you all, uh, if you want to watch about composting. Again, we're talking about composting. The benefits of composting, uh, we said, you know, composting can build up your soil. You can compost in a raised bed. You can compost in a container. You can compost in a plastic bag. You can compost in the ground. You can have stations for composting. Uh, you know, I don't know if you, most of us have seen the three station uh, structure for composting. Um, I didn't have the room, nor do I have the physical ability to compost the hip you know, huge amounts like that. Um, and uh, it would just, I have back problems and hip problems and things like, you know, I just, that, that would be too much for me. I did, I had, did have a compost pal during the winter time in my four by four raised bed last winter. Uh, check out my compost and playlist to see that. Hey, we got eight people in the house. Good. Everybody's starting to come back. So sorry for the disconnection earlier. Something happened. 
Uh, nine people in the house. Yay. Let me know who you are. Okay. So we can see you. And, um, but um, any, any more ideas about composting? Anybody have any ideas? Anybody, 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 anybody completely anxious about composting? Anybody uh, here says no to composting? Like you will never, ever do it. Uh, that you just prefer to buy it. Uh, buy the compost and maybe what type of compost do you buy? Um, we kind of briefly talked about unfinished compost versus finished composting earlier. Um, just, you know, and then like people compost poop. Did y'all know that? Like cow manure, uh, rabbit manure, chicken manure. I'm, I didn't, I, I guess it just didn't. Yeah. That's one of the things that blew my mind, kind of. I was like, composting poop. And and people keep saying, well, you can use rabbit manure, but make sure it's composted down. And I was like, how do you compost manure? Isn't it already broken down? I don't understand how you would compost manure. So if anybody minds explaining that briefly, just, you know, 200 words or less, <laughs> uh, or characters or less on here. Uh, vermicomposting. So that's another way of uh, vermicomposting. People pay to buy worm poop. That's what worm castings uh, is. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, vermicomposting. Yes, I have. Well, I had, uh, I, and I have worms in that trash can too. And I, I don't even know if they're still there, but they were there in the beginning, uh, uh, during the fall, uh, fall last year, the spring of this year, they were there. But, you know, since it's hot, I don't know if the worms are still there or not, if they burnt up, you know, in that compost. I don't know. Uh, but I did have worms in there. Uh, but that's all vermi, verma, vermi means. Um, anytime you see vermi or vermistera, you've heard these products, vermistera worm tea, uh, or that's a company, but worm tea, uh, you know, uh, poop. Everybody wants worm poop. And the more worms you have in your garden, the better for you. Number one, you don't have to buy worm castings because you have all these worms in your garden, which probably means that you have a lot of um, organic matter in your in your garden already because they love you. And if you didn't have that, they wouldn't be there. So and cardboard is one of those things that worms just love. I mean, you put a piece of cardboard down on top of the soil, come back and the next day. Uh, maybe even wet it a little bit, uh, the cardboard, and and come back the next day. You're going to have tons of worms underneath there. They love to break down cardboard. Um, and, yes, so I put worms. I had red, red wigglers in my tires outside, and I also had some in my, po my pal that I did in the 4x4 raised bed throughout the last fall and winter. And so the worms loved, loved, loved that. Um, and you just feed your worms by giving them compost. They absolutely love it. Uh, rabbit poop doesn't need to be broken down. Chicken and cow poop do. Okay. Thank you, DD. I wasn't sure. I've never composted poo before, so I have no idea or intentionally did it. I don't have rabbits and I don't have chickens. I really do want chickens, but I, and I want four of them and I already have their names and I, I <laughs> I really want chickens. I just don't have anywhere to put them. Not on my property. Um, so Miss Full Full Rollo says all that. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Letting the manure age. Okay, thank you. Uh, composting down manure, letting it age. And I guess the whole point of that is what? What? Why would it be beneficial to let the manure age versus using the manure uh, immediately? Just scraping it up and, and putting it in your garden. Why would you not want to do that? I wish I wish Diva Jones was here. She seems very knowledgeable. Backyard gardener. I don't know if she uses. I see. I wish they were here. Um, let's see. Uh. Let's see. It will kill your plants. OK, it will kill your plants if it's not composted all the way down because it gets too hot. Is that what you're saying? 
or because of all the disease or my, you know, bad stuff in the, I don't know. See, I don't understand that. I, I'm not going to be that person that understands all the technical, like chemical stuff. And I can just tell you how it works, like the surface. Um, and, I, you know, if I can do that and then and I'll share it. But I don't, I don't know all the mechanics about, you know, how stuff actually breaks down. And um, you hear the words microbes and organic matter and worm castings and, you know, all those ter terms together all the time. We're talking about composting. Some manures are hotter than others as so not to damage the plants. Got it. Okay. So some manures get hotter than others. Okay. DD says I use organic chicken poop. The chemical reaction does the breakdown process. Will kill your plants by burning the roots. Okay, and I and I do believe that's what happened to the squash plants. And, but it's hard to tell if that's exactly what happened because of the squash bug infestation. So uh, it might have started the process and then the squash bugs finished it off. Not sure. I have no idea. So, uh, but yeah, thank y'all for uh, helping entertaining us about poop. And, and you know who else is probably, I don't know if he's done any videos about composting rabbit manure, but the Bulls Garden and Rabbit Tree, is he, did he stop doing videos? Anybody know? I need to go check him out too. I had heard that on somebody else's channel. I was like, I I think I heard that he had stopped doing videos or was taking a break or something. I don't, I don't remember. But he has a rabbit tree and I'm not sure, I'm not sure. If he did composting videos, but I'm I'm pretty sure that uh he has talked about them because he has a rabbit tree. Talked about using compost rabbit rabbit manure, rabbit manure as compost. So again, you know, you know, this stuff can be these are seed pods from my okra that I just talked about earlier in the day. I did a live, a short live on the okra harvesting seeds, and these pods were ready. Um, and, um, I have still have these pods left to do, um, and, uh, you can hear the difference, uh, see the difference, hear the difference. This one is complete. I thought this one was ready. It's still a little green. Um, you can hear the seeds, but not as much as you can this one. You know what I'm saying? So this one's definitely ready to harvest. I might put this one in a window seal for a couple of days just to make sure. But it might be okay to go ahead and harvest it. I don't know. But um, let's see. I think we're, are we done talking about composting, y'all? Are we done? Uh, MS Empath, welcome. Good afternoon. I think you're new too uh, to the live. So welcome. We're just talking about composting. Why? What's the hype? Why do we do it? Do we want to do it? Should we do it? Uh, who is totally against composting? We'll never ever do it ever. And and maybe and nobody's admitted to that so far. Nobody's admitted in this gardening chat <laughs> that they will never compost. That's interesting. Because I've heard people say, I won't do that ever because I don't want the pest. I don't want to attract rodents. And so nobody nobody is um, saying that yet. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Great. It's good to have you. Um, so what variety of okra? I have red burgundy okra and I have the green okra. <laughs> Clemson spineless, I think that's how you say it okra and i if i'm if i'm i'm pretty sure i only got one seed pod from the oak red okra and the rest of this is green i'm pretty sure i didn't mix up the seed pods but i got a, of course there were more seed pods but i actually got more seeds out of and this is all of them that i'm harvested so far but i probably got um and this is one two three three seed pods so far all these seeds came out of three seed pods okay not sure how many there how many's there but that's a lot of seeds i'm telling you if you plant a, a if you plant a seed grow the plant allow the plant to go through the process of of going to seed 
And really what that means is it'll flower and uh, and if you let it, let it flower, let the flowers dry for, mo for the most part. The, with okra, it's not, uh, the flower is the okra, I guess. It turns into the okra, the flower turns into the okra. And you let it dry because it, it, they get big really, really fast. Okra is one of those plants that, there she is, there's Diva, what's up? <laughs> if I go love one more time. <laughs> Well, I had a I had a technical issue the last one. I, I laid my phone down on my laptop and it like just just glitched and, and turned off. It was it was so crazy. Um, it's like the, the cell phone just took all the energy out of the laptop, just zapped it out and it just cut completely off. So that's why I had to start over. Uh, but, uh, so, so we're talking about composting. Why is it beneficial? Are, you know, will you never compost? Uh, how do you compost? There's all kinds of different ways. And I can't even remember why I referenced your name. No, I do. We were talking about using rabbit manure and any manure and when you should use it, um, in your garden as far like you can purchase composted manure, what that even means. And somebody had explained that that just means it's aged, um, and, and safe to use. Yes. Uh, so we've talked about composting in place, composting, uh, varmic, varmic composting. Um, and we've talked about using structures to compost, using plastic bags, using containers to compost in, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, Diva says that she's used rabbit, goat and chicken manure, composted manure. It, it is aged so it won't burn your stuff. OK, yep. That's pretty much what someone else said. Sorry, I can't. Remember who you were. I think it might have been Suset or um, Suset or Didi. I think it might have been Didi actually. Yep, Didi. Um, so good. And uh, no one here wants to admit that they will never compost or they'll be totally against it. But some people really are like they just don't want to deal with it. They don't fool with it. They'll just buy theirs. Um, and some people say no, because they just don't want to attract rodents or have the possibility of attracting rats and raccoons and possums and things like that. So, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. I, I think you should do what works for you. I, and I don't think you should be judged for that. Um, it's your garden. It's not like they're in working in your garden, right? So you, you do what you need to do and what you feel like is best for you. Um, that's what I think. <laughs> Okay. Um, did I say varmint? I didn't say varmint composting. I did not say that. I might have. I don't know. Four horns is in the house. Uh, alpaca poo. You use out. See, I don't. Y'all, y'all are a very advanced. I, I don't know nothing about using alpaca poop. I let it sit for a few months. I also use lead mold. What is lead mode? Just composted leaves. Okay. And now I've heard about le leaf mold, our, our leaf compost. Yeah. And Cheryl from Cheryl, Cheryl's Organic Food Force is infamous for using leaves. As mulch leaves as compost, she loves, she loves leaves. So if you want ideas about that, check out Cheryl's Organic Food Forest. She, I'm pretty sure she has a playlist maybe or video. She does have videos about it. I'm not sure if she's formulated playlists, but she does have videos about using leaves. I love leaves. I love using leaves as compost, uh, in the compost and using leaves uh, to mulch. And it's free. Okay. And who doesn't like free? Everybody likes free. The earth gives us pretty much everything we need. We just need, you know, just to to learn and be more aware about what it what the what the earth offers us. OK, for free that we can use instead of spending all this deck on money uh, when we don't have to. Um, Hey, backyard gardener. Welcome. Somebody had had a question. Steve Rogers. I don't know if he ever I don't know if he's in this live. I think he was. I'm confused because I had a glitch and I had to start over. Yep. Steve Rogers uh, commented at the beginning. He wants to know how many watermelon plants to plant in a 20 gallon container. And we were telling him to set and I was telling him about four or five uh, and see how that goes. But maybe you can offer more at, uh, you know, recommendation because 
you be, you know, just growing the crap out of some sugar baked watermelons over there. And I'm not sure what type of melons he was growing, um, what type of watermelon he was growing, but he was offering um, uh, insight. He wanted some insight on what to do. Um, let's see. Well, um, leaf. Okay. Okay. Yep. 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 Leaf. Leaf mulch. I knew that's what you meant. Yeah. For Warren's. Uh, Steve Rogers, are you still here? Steve Rogers, are you in the house? I don't know if he's here, but um, any other ideas about maybe disadvantages to composting? People need to hear that stuff too. You know, like I mean, you know, I I told you that initially it was not very satisfying for me or gratifying for me to compost. I jacked it up. Number one, number two, it stunk. And I just could not get myself together. Now, I tried the second time and the second time I was um, successful. And um, and it, it doesn't take a lot to just layer, just layer greens and browns, greens and browns. We talked about greens and browns, what that means in the previous live. So if you don't mind going back to that, uh, uh, if you don't have an idea, I also have a composting playlist so you can check that out, too as well there can be some things that go wrong such as rodents the compost takes too long yes and and you do want to give it time to compost down and um make sure everything is okay uh to use uh i told everybody the the one thing that i have an issue with is the fact that i didn't put a door or some 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 way to get the finished compost out of my trash can so i'll just probably have to cut use something and cut a door or something that I can, uh, so I can get the finished compost out. Some people compost go anaerobic. Yes. That's what mine did. And which is false that the compost is bad. It's not, it just smells bad and it was mushy and it was nasty and it was so wet that I could not recover. Everybody kept telling me to put Browns, put Browns. I put paper, cardboard, tissue, paper, paper towel, and everything that I could possibly put in there and I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it to work out. You did? Yeah, Are you okay? Kitchen. Oh, my goodness. My oh, please don't do that. Mm. Okay. She said she slipped on a banana peel and hurt her head. She watching too much TV. Watching too much. She ain't slipped on banana peels, y'all. She's something else. Plants love that mushy stuff, though. It dries out if you put it in the in your beds, but it's hard to work with like that in the smell. Yeah, it is. And right now, that, that container that I had it in is filled back up with water, and it still has some of that mushy. Uh, I probably got compost tea, literally. That's what that is out there, except it's not aerated. Uh, but I've, I've, it's still out there, and I just refuse to deal with it. Y'all, Have y'all noticed the pattern? I just, I, I just don't want to, it stinks. Water my plants with it. Everybody says that, yes. Water my plants with it. So, I, I, daggone it, if I can handle the fish emulsion, then I know I can handle this, right? Like, get myself together. Okay. I'm going to get myself together. Uh, and stop with the air writing. That's nonsense. What are you talking about? David said it's nonsense to air write. So Seth said, right. Well, why didn't y'all say something instead of just letting me keep saying it? This is just what I know. And, and what I've learned is, you know, the turning of the compost helps aerate it because you need air in soil. I mean, air with everything working together. Put holes in the container so there's some airflow. Is that not true? I put my compost in a square made from four pallets that are tied together with pair. Okay. You can aerate. It's not bad, but it's a waste of time. It doesn't make the tea any better. Oh, you're talking about the compost tea. Ah, got it. And I've seen people use uh, compost like comfrey and the water it doesn't have a bubbler in it or anything. Uh, you need airflow to compost. Yes. OK, OK, OK. So we're talking about two different things here. The first one is composting in place. OK, our compost pal. Yes, aeration is needed. But when you're making compost tea, you're literally using compost materials and water, 
Okay, she's saying if you're doing the compost materials and water, you don't necessarily need to aerate or have a bubbler for that. Okay. Okay, I got it. Oh, <laughs> so, so, so yes, get yourself together. Okay, got it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Okay, and then Fourhorn said that she put netting around it to keep the critters out. Boom. And that's another thing. I mean, you just kind of have to plan for stuff. Nature's going to do what it's designed to do. And like, for instance, if you have a garden and it's a beautiful garden, but it's out in the middle of a big field and you don't put netting around your garden, you can't expect the deer not to eat it. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't. You can't expect that. And 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 so sometimes you have to, um, Essie, uh, Essie, she calls herself Essie the homesteader now instead of Essie the gardener because she really does have a homestead. And but she learned that she was like, oh, my God, I'm going to put some net and some fencing around this because uh, Bumblebee, Bumblebee, I think it's what his name is, or Bubblebee, Bubblebee. He has a beautiful garden, but the deer was hopping over the fence in his garden. So he's having he's had quite a task trying to keep the deer out. So I'm not saying it's 100 percent proof, but it could help keep some of that. He had a groundhog squeeze through a square that big, squeeze that his whole body. He has it on camera. It blew my mind, blew my mind. But they all have some great ideas uh, on how. Yeah. Fences for the deer. Fences for the deer. Um, so. Back to Homestead Heart said the same thing. Okay, cool. Electric net fences work for me. Yep. And some people don't want to use electric fencing because, oh, I don't want to hurt them. I don't want to kill them. Well, you don't have to get the ones that like will do that. You know, it'll just give them a little jolt so they know not to touch it again. Like children, they got to learn, you know, go for it. And you get the jolt. If you didn't learn and come back, that's your fault. Okay. You're just going to keep getting shocked. So. Most of the time they do learn though. They do learn. Um, but yeah, I've been on here for a total of how I don't know how long that last video was. I've already been on here 30 minutes trying to recover from the last uh the the last mess up. Thank you all so much for for being involved. So you using cattle products right now. <laughs> no, I'm not saying use cattle products. Please don't do that. Don't use kettle prod. Please don't do that. Oh, Lord. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen videos of what they do at stock barns and stuff like that when they're selling? I'm, and it's, it's just or people on their farms, too, but definitely at the stock barn. Oh, my gosh. When they're trying to sell the cows and stuff and using those. Oh, it's just it's 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 yeah. It'll make you feel some kind of way. Uh, but yeah, I, I can't imagine. I remember my mama. I don't know if she's in this live or not. Uh, are you still here? Mama. Mama, are you still here? I was sharing my other one. I think she, no, she came in on this one. Are you still here, mama? I don't know if she was here, but I remember when I was a kid, uh, we were on the farm and she was trying to take down, uh, you know, it, it like the fence was latched. The electric fence and she was trying to remove the latch so we can drive through uh to the barn you know uh but they had that that fence up so you know the cows wouldn't get out or whatever and she t she accidentally touched that electric fence and you just had to be there to see it because she <laughs> she did you know one of those and and it wasn't like a like a like like when you see like a like a when you see in the movies, you know, you, your hair sticks up and, and things. But she felt like that's what happened. <laughs> I would never forget that. She said, Lord, I'm, uh, all my arthritis is gone. i never forget that because she used to have knee problems and everything. Mama, are you still here? I don't know if she's still here. But she used to have knee problems and everything. That day, she didn't feel now pain, okay? Nothing. She didn't feel nothing after she got jolted by that fence. Oh, it was so funny. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, I'll never forget that. Uh, I I have always been, I would almost like tear and cry because I would have to climb over the, we climbed over them fences and under them fences all the time. 
Oh, Lord, on the farm. I was so scared I was going to get shot. I, I was driving the, uh, my grandfather asked me to drive the tractor straight. He said, Tisha, just drive it straight because he was fertilizing. And he had a big old, they had tobacco farms uh, that was uh, uh, that was huge. That was most of their farming. And then they had other stuff. But um, he was either trying to water or fertilize or both. I don't know what it is. Big old white. I mean, this big, huge white thing on the on the back of the trailer and he was spraying and he said just drive the tractor straight Letitia uh uh that's all you need to do and go slow and I said yes sir so I'm driving I probably was like 10 10 years old or something I don't know but that, that's how I learned to drive uh, uh mostly and I was and I was driving the tractor straight minding my business I felt and then all of a sudden I remember feeling like I was in a movie I was like wouldn't this be dope if I was in a movie and yeah I just created this movie scene in my head but before I knew it I had dreamed I had you know went somewhere else in my mind but before I knew it I had ran into the fence he said whoa 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 you know hollering at me and I stopped I threw that brake on he said don't move and I was like, oh, Lord. And I realized that I had run into that electric fence and he told me not to move because all the gears, all the gears are between my legs. Right. <laughs> and it was all metal. There were no rubber uh, pieces over top of the gear. And he was like, don't touch nothing. Don't move. Don't move. I was so scared, honey. Ran right into that electric fence. Oh, good God. What are y'all talking about? Let's see. Mama tried. Hey, what's up? Hey, welcome. Uh, and I wasn't talking about Mama tried being here. My actual mother was in the live stream. Um, let's see. Uh, I've been shocked and it's a feeling that you never forget. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. I wasn't shocked that day because I didn't move. I didn't know what I was told after I come out of my daydream. Um Oh uh, my gosh, but yeah, I can't imagine what that feels like. I swear. Oh my goodness. Uh, who was talking about pig poop? What is going on right now? I tried to climb over, forgot that it was on, and fell. <laughs> you fell on the ground and get. <laughs> Oh, it's not funny. Everybody's stepped in poo before. I've stepped in plenty of cow dung. I mean, stepped in plenty. But falling over in it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Oh, <laughs> you got tap with one, two, Diva. <laughs> oh, I bet it made you holler. I bet it did. I couldn't imagine. Oh. Oh my goodness. Hey Mikey Flo. Um uh, <laughs> Yeah, y'all. I'm telling you, it is those electric fences, but I will never forget that. My mom and she just kept smiling. It's like she could not stop smiling. Oh, it was so funny. It was so funny. You didn't have to laugh like that. <laughs> I wasn't laughing at you for horns. You know, I'm laughing with you. I'm laughing with you for a horn. Oh, y'all. Uh, but I've, I have, I, I'm the clumsiest person ever. So, like, and my daughter gets it on this. Lord, she's always falling, just tripping over her feet. And, and maybe nothing's even there. I mean, it looks like sometimes nothing is even there and she falls. And I'm, like, inf infamous for running into things in the house. So, like, the door is there. I know that door is there. It has never moved at all since we've been in this house. But I will still click that door every single, I mean, trying to walk out of the room every single time. It just never, never happens. So I get it. And things happen. Things happen on a farm. You know, you just don't know. DD, you are exactly right about being shocked. Never by an electric fence, but by a light socket. Oh, I can say that I've felt that before. And that is not fun. Or, you know, these, um, these surge protectors are supposed to prevent, you know, fires. From happening from being overloaded and all this stuff but sometimes when i plug stuff into an extension cord i feel a jolt yeah and that does not feel good i hate that whole feeling it, it's just it's a small one but 
It does not feel good. Hey, what's up, everybody? 14 people in the house is what I see. Nope, 13 now. Uh, so thank you all for being here. I have, I was on earlier. Y'all probably been sitting for two hours. I all together. The video messed up and, and cut off, so I had to start again. And I've already been on here almost a daggone hour. Um <laughs> Not this, not this day, Sicily, 1960. Okay. Uh, what you and Diva talking about? <gasps> oh, no, Dee Dee. <laughs> no, I can imagine that it does not feel good to get shocked. Uh uh. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. Oh, my goodness, y'all. Y'all have been so much fun. I don't know how we went from composting to getting shocked by a fence. I can't remember. But uh, but that's what it is. <laughs> I really don't remember how we got here. But that's crazy, Dee Dee. Mm-mm-mm. Let me see. What else? Composting, composting. But yeah, you, you know, I um I told y'all I compost my toilet paper rolls and my paper towel rolls. Um, I literally have just so in case y'all have not seen the uh the composting video, and y'all don't believe me. Hold on a second. I have a few a few new people in here too. So here go my trash can while I collect all my paper towel rolls. See? Paper towel rolls on paper towel rolls and my toilet paper rolls. Yep. And I compost these. So uh, if I run it, you know, in the winter time when you're composting or if you're trying to keep up the composting in the winter time, browns are hard to find, you know, and that's why when you when the fall comes, Y'all better be scraping up leaves or hire some little kids in the in the neighborhood to break them up for you and bag them. So I still got at least I think I got one bag of leaves from last fall still outside. So and then I've Starbucks free coffee grounds. They bag them up for us and put a little sticker on them says gardeners. OK, um, so so, you know, go to a Starbucks and see if they got some. They usually have them setting out. They're free. They want you to take them. OK, stack up on them. And, and, and before I put them in the compost, shell, it does take some time. And I sometimes I use scissors. Sometimes I just use my um, hand, but I'll, I'll tear it up like this and then just tear it in pieces. No particular size. I'm just like this uh, to make it easier to break down for the worms to break it down. Uh, you don't have to, I guess, but, you know, instead of just putting whole rows in there, I do try to help my worms out, and I'll do this, you know, and it, it probably took me about 20 seconds to get through a row. Now, it does take some time if you let them, you know, uh, pile up, but that's what I do. You can also use these for mulch, you know, you don't have to go to the store and buy, buy that different color mulch. Now, I would recommend that you water everything down because then you don't want paper and cardboard all over your yard. But, yeah. Um, let's see. <laughs> Dee Dee said she got what she deserved. <laughs> oh, yeah, my friend smoked enough that I smoked enough that I learned from her. I was never attracted to it for that reason. Don't know what you're talking about. I'm not even going to go there. Um, DD, did you start that asymmetric TLC in salt and pepper hairdo? Okay. Don't know what that's about. Um, you ever start seeds in those Letitia, uh, in the toilet paper rows? No, no. But I, I mean, it's basically like when you buy, you can, um, uh, and all, all you would do, I've seen it and it's real easy. I mean, just cut, just cut it in in half or whatever, and you can fold the end. There's a way to cut and then fold it at the bottom, and you can do it like that. I don't know, but 
and then fill it with soil. That's a perfect seed starting uh, technique. You're right, Diva. That's perfect. Um, the the toilet paper roll is probably the easiest. Um, and a lot of people do this too to start their um, is it moringa seeds and some root vegetables. I've seen people use uh, toilet paper rolls to do that. And how many toilet paper rolls do you throw away in your house? You know what I'm saying? And you could just be repurposing those for seed starting, uh, you know, holders, um, uh, cups or whatever, or composting them. It's perfect. Three Musketeers is in the house. Hey, how you doing? Um, uh, I've, I've, you know, I'm not opposed to those because I, but I've had in my mind, I'm composting them. I'm saving them for the winter time. Uh, so I just do that. But yeah, you can definitely use composting or um, see, you can definitely use toilet paper rolls and paper towel rolls to start seeds in. Yeah, fill them up with soil and get on with it. Um, all right, y'all, seriously, I'm about off of here. I'm about done. So sorry, Three Musketeers. I know you just got here. Um, but check out the live stream before as well. Like I had a glitch, so I had to start over. And then new people came in the house and we just had a whole nother conversation. So we talked about everything from composting to getting shocked by electrical fences. <laughs> so uh, I'm good. I've never said more things in my life. Toilet paper rolls and coffee cans. Yes. Yes. I just talked about uh, using coffee cans to compost in place. Yep. Yep. So I have a few of these thanks to my in-laws. Uh, they, they've been saving these for me. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been real hanging out with everybody. I got to get back to helping the hubby out with some things and um, uh, get my, I'm done. I'm pretty much, I'm going to open this one last okra. Uh, if you did not see my video earlier about I uh, harvested some okra seeds live. So check that out. We talked a lot about okra and this is just all from three plants so far. Look at all those seeds from three or three pods, three okra pods. Um, so I have okra seeds for days. I don't ever have to buy okra seeds ever again um, <laughs> in my entire life. And there's a lot more out there. Um, not ready yet, but there's a lot more okra pods out there that I'm going to let dry. And when that frost comes, I'm going to harvest them and collect the seeds. So I may have some for sale if anybody wants them. I have red burgundy okra and the green Clemson spineless okra. Um, I can't, I'm going to bank on that. I know which is which I'm going to do a great job at trying to keep those separate. However, if you do, if I do sell the seeds and you do get a mix, you know, just see it as a bonus, you know, right. You got you, a lot of people have never tried the red burgundy okra before. So, you know, just try it out and see how, what you think. I had never had it till this year. And I really think, um, the bigger it gets, Obviously, okra, the bigger it gets, the more woody it gets. But I really do believe that the red burgundy okra can get a little bit bigger than the green and you can still eat it and enjoy it. OK, the green okra, if it, if it gets bigger than. Really, if it gets bigger than this, maybe a little bit bigger, uh, you're not going to enjoy eating it very much. It, it doesn't taste very well. It, it could probably get a little bit bigger than this. But um, no bigger, really. Um, so check that out. I love y'all. 14 people in the house. Eight thumbs up. So if you don't mind giving me a thumbs up uh, before you get off of here today, that will be amazing. Have a great and wonderful evening. And I love y'all. Peace out. <laughs>